right, let's talk about similar figures. Whenever figure, figures are similar, um, we have certain rules that we get to apply to them. Like for example, we know that they are the same shape. A triangle is never gonna be similar to a square, um, but they don't necessarily have to be the same size. If we're looking at this figure, for example, it appears that this one is slightly larger and this one is slightly smaller. The corresponding angles are equal. So just because one is larger than the other doesn't mean the angles are larger than the other. Angle, for example, this angle marked Y and the other angle marked Y, they are the same. It doesn't matter which one I was pointing to when I said this angle marked Y because both angle Y's are the same. Same with Z and X. It's just our sides that have increased in size. Now, because the angles are the same, when our sides increase in size, they are equal to each other's proportions. Like, let's say I divide A by P, as I do right here. Well, it turns out that that ratio, or that fraction, um, is going to be equal to any other corresponding side, like B and Q, if I put those together. Well, if I divide them, they're going to give me the same thing as if I divided A and P. And the same thing would happen with C and R. Those fractions are actually going to become exceptionally useful. Let's go with this example and see why. So over here, I notice I have BM and I have XR. Now, BM and XR are corresponding, and this symbol here in the middle, that means similar. So because they're similar, I know that the ratio of their sides is congruent. Also, if the ratio of their sides are congruent, guess what? That means the ratio of their perimeters are congruent. So if I have BM, I'm going to put that as 12 over 9. Now, BM is part of this BMY or YBM. So if BM's on top, then that YBM is going to be on top of that perimeter. So we're going to solve for the perimeter of our other triangle. Now, if you're looking at this, you're thinking, well, we can use cross multiplication. Sure, we can go ahead and use cross multiplication. Um, 12 times X is going to be 12X. 9 times 20 is 120. Oh, sorry, 180, my bad. Um, and then we need to divide by 12 on each side. And X is going to be equal to 15. Right, let's go with another one. We're given RY and CJ. We're trying to find the perimeter of RYX. Oh, we are, we're given the perimeter of RYX. We're trying to find the perimeter of J. CA, we see this symbol here between the two triangles means we know they're similar, so we can set up a proportion to solve. I'm just going to go 8 over 11. Now RY is on top, and RY is part of RYX, so that needs to go on the top. And then we're going to solve for our other perimeter. Three hundred and fifty-two divide by eight divide by eight. X equals forty twenty. I guess we we're doing centimeters here, so I should probably start including units. Let's do one last. Now we notice we still have the similar figures. We still have RA and J. I'll just go ahead and do three over six. And that's going to be equal to okay, RA, AR, so part of the first triangle. 36 needs to have this as well. It's like the three. Notice how we're matching up. Same triangle always stays in the numerator. The same triangle always stays in the denominator. Now, 
we are going to multiply. Three times X is three X. Six times 36 is 216. Divide each side by three. X equals, what is that? Seven. Okay, let's go on to actually be give, being given the figures. Now, we are given that these figures are not to scale, which is okay. We don't care exactly what they look like. We just need to know that the angles are the same. Now, I noticed that I have two swoops here, two swoops. So V is congruent to K. So I'm going to list those first. Um, I know one swoop here, one swoop here. That means that J is congruent to R. Now, one other thing to think about is this last angle. We know that all triangles add up to 180. So if we took away two congruent angles from that 180, then the leftover would be the same in both triangles. So even though it's not marked, we know that M is gonna be congruent to X. Now, because all the angles are congruent, we can say that these triangles are similar. And so we can set up ratios in order to solve. Now we need to make sure that we are matching up corresponding parts. So I see between one and three from J to M. J and M are the first and last, first and last here, or X and R. So X and R, that's right here. Means I know that 18 and 10 are gonna go together. So I've just established this as my top triangle. I wrote the 18 on top, which means that that 20 is also going to go on top. And I'm trying to solve for X of E. X of E is right here. Um, luckily, X of E corresponds to MK. Because MK is right here. And that's the 20 we just pointed out. So I can solve for X of E now. Looks like we need to do some more cross multiplication. 18 times XV equals 200. Divide both sides by 18. And what is XV equal to? Uh, XV is equal to well, we could leave it as a fraction, or at least I would like to leave it as a fraction. However, this says round to two decimal places. So I'm going to take that 200. I'm going to divide by 18. That's going to give me 11.11111. And so forth. So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to say, hey, the two decimal places. Here's the second decimal place. Will that one make the other one round up or stay the same? And it'll make as our answer. All right, let's do the exact same thing. I'm not going to make a similarity statement this time. This time I'm just going to make my equation um, from corresponding parts. I'm going to start with what I want to know. I want to know why W. Okay, so if I want to know why W, I need to pay attention to what part of the other triangle corresponds to YW. Well, I'm going from two swoops to no swoops in the angles. So two swoops to no swoops is right here. That means that those correspond. Okay, I only have two other pieces. Now, I started with this guy being on top. So the other piece known on this triangle should also be on top. So, and 16, well, we're going from one swoop to no swoops, one swoop to no swoops. Those guys correspond as well. And now I can cross multiply. Um, but another thing I could do, 
if I don't feel like cross multiplying is right now wy is just being divided by three. So I could just multiply each side by three. The threes over here would cancel and wy would give me an answer. Of course, 48 over five, it still wants it rounded to two decimal places. So I'm still gonna plug that into my calculator. I'm gonna get 9.6. Now notice 9.6 terminates, meaning that the decimal ends. So I don't actually have to do any rounding um, because I have less than two decimal places anyways. Finally, let's solve for wy in this case. Okay, where's wy? WI is right here. And while I'm at it, I know that this is the other side, WX, that I'm going to be using. So I'll just make a cycle for those five. Now, what does WI correspond to? We've got two swoops to no swoops, two swoops to no swoops right here. That's four. And what is yx corresponds to? Well, we've got one swoop to no swoops, one swoop to no swoops. Uh, that's 12. Again, I'm just going to multiply each side by four in order to solve instead of cross multiplying. Those guys will cancel and we'll have 16 times four divided by 12. Which is equal to five plus three, 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 and then just keep going. But I ran out of paper. So, will this three make the other three round up or stay the same? It'll make it stay the same. So, my answer will be five plus three. And they're rounding to two decimal places. Okay, now here, let's do something a little bit different. Now, instead of talking about perimeter, we're going to talk about area. Now, one thing to keep in mind when we're talking about area is that area is the product of the base and the height, which means that we have to incorporate two units, which means that we're going to have our scale factor squared. So for example, we don't know exactly um, what the base and height of these triangles are, but I'm going to work, say, this random triangle ABC as an example. So we're going to give it a height of five inches and a base of 12 inches. So if I was going to compute the area, area would be equal to one half base times height. So I have one half, my base here is 12 inches. My height here is five inches. So because the inches repeats, I have inches squared. I'm gonna end up with 30 for this volume. So because um, we have two linear distances twice, we'll have our scale factor twice. So we need to determine our scale factor, and then we can convert our area of one triangle into the area of the other triangle. So we know the area of YJC, um, which corresponds to the side CY. So we're gonna go from CY, we're gonna go from 12, multiply it by some scale factor, we're gonna get three. So if we want to solve for that scale factor, let's divide by 12. And our scale factor is going to be 1 fourth. So if I multiply 34 by 1 fourth squared, because area is squared, and we have my answer. And that's going to give me 2.125. Now, we want to round it to the nearest hundredth, and our hundredth is two digits after the decimal place. So if I look 
here, that means I'm going to take this two and will that five make the two round up so stay the same? Well, it'll make it round up. So 2.13, in this case, will be yards squared. Yeah, let's do that again. Okay, so we have the area of JPB. JPB corresponds to PB. So we're going from PB to KC. Let's solve for our scale factor. We have 11 times some scale factor is 12. Lot and divide by 11 on both sides. And my scale factor is going to be 12 11. So I'm not going to convert that to a decimal right now because I don't want to make any rounding errors. Now I need to use that scale factor squared, multiply it by 36 because that's our known area, and get our unknown area. So 12 over 11 squared. What's that going to give? Well, if I clicked on my calculator first, I got 5,184 over 121. And while that is the right answer, we want this rounded to nearest hundredth. So I actually need to do that division. 5,184 divided by 121. And that's going to give me 42.8429. Blah, 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 blah. Looking at this four and this two, will the two make the four round up or stay the same? It can stay the same, 42.84. In this case, it is yard squared again. Do that one last time. So we are given the area of BJY. Okay. Over here, JY corresponds to that. So we're going from here to here. So three times what scale factor? Gave me nine. We divide by three on both sides. The scale factor will be three. And we're going to convert our area over here, that 23, times our scale factor squared will give us our answer. And that'll give me 207, a nice whole number, feet squared. And that's our last example. And this is how we solve for perimeter, area, and missing sides of similar triangles.